What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes and today is gonna to be a very quick video. I'm just gonna go through the two new tools that have been added into Lightroom with the latest update. Now, in no means I'm paid by Lightroom, I've never had a partnership with them, but it is important to learn the new tools that have been implemented into the program, so maybe we can use them in our workflow. So let's jump into it. So guys, once in the develop tab, the first tool that we're gonna check out is Color Mixer. As you can see, it's where HSL should be normally. Now, if we click on it, we can also use HSL, we have it in the mixer menu, so we can alter the hue, the saturation, or the luminance, and we can basically see it like this, or we can see it color by color to alter them specifically. And then we have another menu at the right, which is point color. Now point color allows us to select a specific color in our image and alter it independently from the other colors that maybe are in a similar range. We've all been there where we're trying to change the color of a specific part on the image. Let's say I want to change the hue of the jacket of my friend Patricio over here. I'm gonna start moving the hue slider for the oranges, but quickly I realize that I'm not only altering the jacket, but also the vegetation in the background. You can see how I'm altering the jacket to the magentas, but also these leaves in the background. Normally we would have to use the masking tools, or maybe if you're more comfortable, jump into Photoshop and create a mask to isolate the specific part on the image that you want to edit. Not anymore, because now you can use point color. So I'm gonna to move to point color, I'm gonna select the eyedropper, and select the color that we want to edit and alter. Now, as you can see, we have different sliders over here and I would divide this tool into two parts. The first quadrant over here at the top will allow us to control or edit the specific selection. So right here, by using the graph over here or using the sliders, we can change the hue of the selection, the saturation and the luminance. And then we have this second section over here that allows us to refine our selection range. So right here we can change the hue. If we don't want the selection to cover different gammas, we can change the saturation and the luminance, and we can also select the visualization range. So right here, we're just gonna isolate the jacket. And for that, I'm just gonna visualize the range firstly. And notice how every other color that is not in the range that we're selecting is changed to black and white. So our objective right now is to make these dots in the vegetation and these the magentas in the cap completely black and white. So in this case, I'm just gonna select the hue range because, well, these are different colors to the jacket that we're selecting. So I'm gonna move this point over here that will control the range in the magentas. Just move it up so we're excluding all these colors, all these magentas and purples until we don't have any magenta in our selection. Then I'm gonna do the same with the yellows over here. We don't want any yellow, we want oranges. I'm just gonna move it until they disappear from our selection. And just like that, we've isolated the orange from the jacket of my friend Patricio. Now, depending on the case, maybe you're presented with a scenario where you need to change the luminance or the saturation. In this case, I only needed to change the hue. Now we can deactivate the visualization range or the mask, and we can alter the color specifically. So if I move the saturation, notice how the leaves in the background nor the cap is changing. So we, we basically isolated this color. So I can see several scenarios where point color can be a very useful tool. Now, point color is not available for the mobile version, but it is available for desktop and for the classic versions of Lightroom. Now, on the other hand, the second tool that we're gonna look into is available also in the mobile versions as well as the desktop, which is called Lens Blur. Now, right here we have it, and as you can see, it says Lens Blur and at the side, early access because they're testing out the reception from the community. Now this tool, what it's gonna do is use AI to analyze your image so you can change the depth of field and the shape of the elements in the background. Very similar to a function that iOS has in the gallery where you can basically, uh, in post edition, just change the depth of field, which how the amount of blurriness, the amount of sharpness in your image is basically the same, but implemented into Lightroom. So first of all, to use it, you need to apply it. So you can select apply. So once the program has analyzed our image, now we can start to play around with the sliders. Now the first slider that we have over here is blur amount, and this will simulate a larger or narrower depth of field depending on what we select to it. Now this image was shot with a 35 millimeter lens with 1.4 aperture, but I'm not in the sweet spot of the outer focus. I'm quite far away from the subject. Therefore, the bokeh are quite small and the elements in the background aren't as creamy as they should be. If I was maybe a meter, closer to the subject, everything would be completely blurred out. So if I want to simulate or correct the blurriness in the background, I would move the blur amount to the plus 100. I notice immediately how everything becomes completely creamy, the bokeh balls increase their size, 
and it basically is simulating maybe a 1.2 or a 0.95 aperture right here. Now this is completely unnatural, but I do see the case where this could be quite useful. Maybe you're starting out in photography, you just bought your first camera and it comes with a kit lens and the kit lens has a very slow aperture, maybe it has a 3.5 to 5.6, maybe it starts at 5.6. So with a slow lens, your adaptive field is gonna be very wide. Therefore, it's gonna be very difficult to create the subject isolation that you want. So you can simulate it, just take your photo, jump into Lightroom, import it, use lens blur and just blur out a bit of the background. But I do recommend to be a bit more conservative and maybe use the fine tuning over here to adjust the value so it's real and it's organic and not completely unnatural. So here Lightroom automatically detected the central subject and blurred out everything from the background. But we can also fine tune this uh, by using the focal range over here slider. So we can basically make the depth of field very narrow or very wide, basically telling how much blur is gonna be is gonna start to appear. And right here, the colors that are being painted in the focal range will basically determine the elements that the program is detecting that are closer to the camera or further away. So if we activate the visualization depth over here, we can basically see what the program is detecting. And you can see that oranges and yellow are closer to the camera. And then magentas, blues are darker. And then the black is basically the elements that are furthest away, basically in the infinite in the focal. So right here, we can also see them in the focal range. The yellows are over here, closer to the camera. Then magentas and blues are further away. And then blacks are basically the sky there, which is in the background. So it's quite interesting that the program is by itself, by AI detecting different layers on our image and determining which is closer and which is further away from the camera. Now, like all artificially generated images, it will have some flaws. So right here, if we zoom in, we can see that it did quite a good job isolating the subject from the background, but right here we have a little mishap. So right here, if you see anything like this, you need to use the tools like focus or blur to basically erase this error. So blur will basically blur anything that you select and focus will make it in focus. So there, these are brushes. So you can use blur right here. You can change the size, the feather, the flow. And I'm just going to add some blur into this part. Something like that to correct the imperfection. Now, another thing that we can do with this tool is change the shape of the autofocus elements of the bokeh. So right here we have this image and obviously I applied this horrible blur, but it's just to exemplify what we can do. So right here we have our natural bokeh balls. Then we can change them into halos. We can even change them into pentagons, into hoops, into donuts over here. And we can even change them into this effect created by vintage lenses that creates lemon shaped uh, out of focus elements or American footballs in the borders like the Helios 442 lens. So there you have it guys, the two new tools that have been added into Lightroom. This last one, I'm never going to use it because I'm not really a big fan of AI. I like organic looking images, but in general terms, it's nice to have it in the program. Lastly, just a little apology guys, because I haven't uploaded videos in a very consistent manner this past few months. And that's basically because uh, recording, creating content in general has been very difficult for me. I'm a person that suffers from insomnia and uh, lack of sleep really affects my workflow, it affects how sharp I am and my ability to concentrate while recording, talking to a camera, editing. Uh, it's very difficult for me. And these past few months have been all over the place with with my sleeping schedule so apologies from that i'm gonna work on it and hopefully in the next few weeks i can start operating more consistently again so that's gonna be it for today guys i'm tony fuentes cheers to all of you i'll see you in the next one